Hello guys, I'm back again. Um, today we are going to review these books. Um, I did a video on this book, but the only problem with, with that video was that it came out uh, upside down. But I didn't show you this book and this book. So let's go uh, check it out. Hopefully uh, this doesn't uh, turn out uh, upside down. Um, now I haven't been on YouTube like for I would say for like a week because I kind of got really discouraged in a way because every time when I make a video it's um, it's always um, you know turning backwards or upside down and stuff and so I had a, like sort of like a burnout and I don't want to feel like that because I want to feel positive especially when I draw so uh, so let's start with these two these two books first and um, maybe we'll do this book in another video or something that's what we'll do and let me get my um, pencil here just in case if I have to show you guys some illustrations I will I just gotta get some good pens here to work with Okay, so let's start with this book first. This one is, uh, uh, I think it's by Christopher. No, it's not by Christopher Hart. It's um, it's a company called Miller and Ball something, WG something. And uh, <clears throat> these books, there's two more books I got to show you with um, these artists. It's Steve Miller and uh, Brian Ball. And uh, this is more like... Uh, how to draw monsters and creatures and uh, it's got you know a lot of cool stuff a lot of techniques step by step again I'm going to show you page by page since the um, the phone is sort of like um, um, vertical so I have to show you page by page first let me uh because it's kind of cold in here so let me turn off the AC for a while All right, so let's start. This is called uh, Scared, How to Draw Fantastic and Horror Comic Characters. And uh, I had to order this book again because um, I lost it way, way back. But you're going to love this because it's got a lot of cool pictures of monsters and creatures. And Steve Miller is, um, he's a, a comic book artist, I think. I think he worked for, let me see, it says it right here. These are the artists. Arthur Adams <clears throat> um, did stuff for uh, Dark Horse, uh, Creatures from the Black Lagoon. Vincent Locke uh, worked for, uh, he did Zombies, the, the Dead Worlds. Bernie Wrights, Wrightson. He did some stuff called Lucky 13. And uh, doesn't tell you too much about, I know some of these, um, I think it was a, a different artist actually worked with these guys. Oh yeah, Batman, Shaggy Chan, The Adventures of Roughnecks, Starship Troopers, Chronicles, Men in Black. Uh, that's Brian Ball and Steve Miller, the author. Uh, he did stuff for videos and toys um, and magazines, I think. And, uh, well, let's get going. Let's um, show you page by page what this book has to offer. <clears throat> and then we'll judge it to see if it's um, a good book. Um, I actually recommend it because if you like fantasy artwork, um, you'll definitely love this book. Especially when it comes to drawing zombies and monsters. So here's uh, this is a fa fantastic um, illustration with inking. 
and this is by um, Roger Cruz. So the, the, you're, we're gonna have like different artists that worked for this book. It's not only these three guys, but you have different artists that worked on this book. That's an amazing ink work right there. <laughs> going off every time when I do a video the alarm goes off it's amazing I keep forgetting to turn off the alarm it's fantastic work this is the um, the classic drawing of Frankenstein Bernie White son Frankenstein Look at the works on this. Fantastic inking. The details are amazing on this. And he did so, you can tell there's a lot of details here on inking. <clears throat> there's like a wolf man. This is uh, actually by Ball. Ball did this illustration. Let me take out my watch. I don't need it anymore. I just came from work, guys. And it was an incredible night I had yesterday. But I'm not going to tell you all about it because it's going to take a long time. So basically, we're going to focus on the book. And an interview with Vincent Locke. This is sort of like an interview with the artist. Talks about himself, his career, more inking work. It's phenomenal, fantastic stuff here. Till the next moon, full moon, the turn of the 21st century. It's a lot of reading also. This book has a lot of reading. An interview with uh, Top Cow Comics. Look at that, that is cool. Very, very cool. It's amazing stuff here, amazing artwork. Let me see if I can change the uh, glare on this, yeah. At least a little bit phase out. Unfortunately, the light, it's not getting, it's not helping me out that much. <clears throat> this is a pretty cool drawing of a, an old uh, haunted house, I would guess. Very creative. This is also creative. I like this. I like creative stuff, you know, even though it's a little bit off the wall stuff, but it's, um, it's really cool, you know. And it has sort of like a classical atmosphere to it, the, uh, the artwork. Because I'm into that classic classic artwork. You can tell here's the um, skeleton. Sort of like the silhouette of the skeleton. This is by um, Mitch Bird. He also does uh, comics, Mitch Bird. Here we have the, the, the body uh, construction. You have the skeletal and you have the fleshing right here. see what else there is here oh yeah this is uh sort of like a half zombie flesh monster or something like that you can tell this guy is like really bulky very bulky muscles a lot of details on those muscles very comic book style and we got faces over here but first let's see this one right here it's pretty cool it's like a green Frankenstein or something. <clears throat> Here we have faces. The front view uh, profile from a woman and the man. 
I just don't like too much the, the way he drew because it looks very, I don't know. It doesn't look like a classical style like I usually like to draw. I wouldn't really use these methods. Um, I don't know exactly how these methods are. Um, I would guess that he would probably do uh, the oval shape of the construction of the head and starts out with the eyes, a triangle for the nose and and over here you can see uh, sort of like a shape, like a triangle shape for the lips, the form of it, you know. Then a little by little you start, you know, rendering and start doing all the flesh. Here's the profile right here. It's not bad, but I wouldn't really consider <clears throat> using the, the technique. It would probably throw me off. I don't know, you know, I haven't tried it yet, but but I have an idea of how it's done. This is really cool. I like this because you could actually um, do some type of inking and then color pencils at the same time. That's pretty cool. And I gotta admit the, um, the creativity is fantastic. It's very creative. I like this. Very alien, humanoid alien. And this doesn't look so bad either. You know, it's very classical, cartoony-like. I think this is made by, um, yeah, Mitch Bird did this. And this one, I'm not sure. I think this was made by, oh, yes, Al Rio. Al Rio does um, a lot of stuff for uh, Dark Image Comics, Dark Horse. That's pretty cool right here. I like the way he did the construction of the face. Looks kind of like a Loomis style head, you know, kind of. That's really cool. He finished the whole head just by using this technique over here. That came out really cool. I like that. And uh, this is pretty cool. Clothes. Sort of like gothic clothes and stuff like that. And then we have here more pictures here. The final gross out, gross out. I don't know what they mean by that. <clears throat> like I said, oh, this is by Blevins. Uh, yeah, Blevins uh, does a lot of comics also. And we reviewed a couple of books by Blevins. Uh, I don't know if you guys remember, but if you want, you could just keep scrolling on my library and see it. Fantastic artwork, very gothic, very medieval type thing. Really cool stuff. And this one is made by Vincent Locke. Here we have a figure construction. It's sort of like a mannequin if you could actually figure it out, you know, uh, observe it very well. It's sort of like a mannequin or like a toy figure technique, like many of the uh, videos that I showed you before that you can actually construct your figure, so, you know, using a toy figure, but forming the whole gesture like a toy figure. So that's pretty neat. The finished drawing. And it looks like the... Um, the, 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 I think it was the, um, the Bram Stroker Dracula, yeah. Pretty much looks like it. But more like the cartoony style. But of course, he got the idea probably from the movie uh, Bram Stroker's... Stroker's, I think? I got the movie. I know I have the movie, but I just can't pronounce the name right. Here we have the classic vampire, which is pretty cool. I like this. Well, you can tell it's more like cartoony, like a cartoony type of vampire, but it works. I think it came out pretty good. This is also a vampire female cartoon chick. You can tell the big, she got some big teeth right there. She's ready to bite anybody that comes right before her. And this is the uh, actual gesture, you know. Pretty much what I've been showing you guys. You know, you do the shape, the top of the shape of the body, and then you do the circle. Of course, this doesn't look so good. I mean, you know, this is the pelvis part right here. And, uh, of course, um, you can see the shape of the torso right here. But it didn't really come out that good. But if it would have been me, I would have do a whole 
bean shape and then shape it like an hourglass at the same time. But of course, this is sort of like cartoony. This is not really like professional. Well, I wouldn't say professional, but more like that, you know, John Buscema or Alex Ross type of figure drawing. You know, it's just more like cartooning. So this is also cartoony, like uh, sort of like some type of demon cartoon. And I got to admit, that's really cool. And this one is made by... Um, doesn't really tell you. Oh, yeah. Um, Brett Booth. You see, Brett Booth, he did a lot of stuff. And which I will share some books on from um, Brett Booth. But I just got to find those books. I don't know where they are right now. But when I find them, I will do some videos from Brett Booth. Brett Booth. And this is the finger figure construction, you know, it's sort of like a gesture figure construction. And he builds it up with uh, body parts, cylinders, shapes. And this is the actual drawings. Some of this stuff, if you guys uh, notice, you can tell it's all made by Photoshop. Every uh, single detail of it, sort of like Photoshop. Here we have more gestures right here, the step-by-step -step process in creating uh, some type of demon vampire. Oh, no, no, yeah. This is sort of like Nostra Afu, Afutu. You see, there were like uh, three types of vampires. You had the classic vampire, the Bela Lugosi vampire. And then you had the early, early 19, I would say 1920s vampire that it was called Nostra Afu. They actually did, yeah, 1922 vampire flick. Uh, directed by F.W. Mernu. And yeah, that was the early, early vampire uh, from the 19, 1922. And believe it or not, I'm, I'm into classic movies, but I don't don't have nothing from, from Nostra Afatu. I did have, but I lost it. It's with a, an actor. His name is uh, uh, Kinski, something like that. And he made an excellent uh, <clears throat> movie about uh, Nastro Afutu. So he was like a vampire in the movie. Klaus Kinski. I think his name is Klaus Kinski. He's, I think he's German. I'm not really sure. From Austria. And he did a lot of foreign films. So you might want to look up that movie. I think that movie is available. Uh, and I think that movie was made like in the early... No, I think it was in the late 60s. This is a fantastic drawing right here. Again, it's all made, you can tell it's all Photoshop. This is like ghost drawings and sort of like, you know, graves, gravestones and grave tombs, all that stuff. Background, very uh, Gothic-like. And my favorite of them all, because that's where I came from, upstate Terrytown, Sleepy Hollow. And my school, believe it or not, in New York, upstate New York, it was called, believe it or not, it was called Sleepy Hollow. And the legend, actually, it was just like a fairy tale legend. Some people actually say it was true. It was about a teacher that, um, I, it was about two teachers that were, they were in love with the same woman and... The other guy um, tried to scare the other guy away by dressing up like in like sort of like a headless horseman, something like that. And it's, I gotta admit, this is really cool. The horse is very evil looking, like you know, and uh, it's a little bit exaggerated. The the legs of the horse, um, but yeah, this, their horses are actually they stand up like that, sort of like a stance. And I've seen it in a lot of uh, cowboy movies, western movies. They do stand up like that. And the horseman, the headless horseman holding the pumpkin. So right here, Sleepy Hollow. I think uh, Johnny Depp uh, made a movie. It was called Sleepy Hollow, which I definitely got to get that one too. Because that's one of my favorite movies. And here we have... This is also made by Vince Locke, the Green Ripper. 
and here we got zombies and I'm, I'm definitely a freak with zombie movies uh, sort of like a I'm a zombie fan I most of the movies I have are mostly zombie movies a lot of people like vampire movies I like zombie movies but don't get me wrong trust me I do like vampire you know I have like maybe two or three movies vampire movies I mean the ones that I really like there's all I mean there's so many vampire movies and uh, I have like maybe two by uh, Vincent Price uh, not Vincent Price sorry uh, Christopher Lee he was the original well after Bela Lugosi then he then um then came um, another British actor uh, what's his name uh, Christopher Lee that's an awesome drawing of a zombie right there and of course when you're drawing zombies you got to make the clothes all messy like see the uh, very wrinkled, all ripped up, like he came from the grave. And so I gotta admit, you have to be really creative when you're doing zombies. Uh, this is also sort of like a zombie. This is made also by, um, doesn't tell me. Nope, it doesn't tell me who did this. That's sort of like a zombie woman, raggedy clothes. And this is the actual gesture to do the uh, the zombie figure. Zombie skeleton. And pretty much like I've been showing you guys, you know, you do the gestures, circles, ovals, and joints, and then you make the legs sort of looking sort of like a conish, like, you know, sort of like a cone shape or maybe a long stick, thick stick like that, what you see over here and you see here. So you're giving your whole body and your whole gesture shape. <clears throat> this one is sort of like the other one, but it doesn't show too much um, form on the legs. But it's very good. I mean, it's a good technique to do any type of character you want. Here we have a gesture again. And I've shown you guys pretty much something very similar to this that I've shown you. It's, I think it's one of, one of those fantasy books that I showed you before that it looked the, the, um, the figures were like kind of like mannequin kind of. Here we go again with zombies. Yeah, there's a lot of zombie art here. Mummies. Now here comes mummies. This one is made by... Oh, excuse me. Um, this is made by... I think this is made by... Um, Bernie Weinstein. Yeah, Bernie Weinstein. I'm not really sure about this one. This one is Mitch Bird. This one's Mitch Bird and this is Bernie Weinstein. This one is Steve Miller. And Steve Miller works like this. He does pretty much what I do. I use sometimes a circle, but I work like like so many ways. I mean, you know, it depends on the mood, the type of gesture I want to use. This is the well, uh, yeah, the werewolf, how uh, from human to mutant werewolf that's pretty cool the transformation of a werewolf you know i saw something very very disturbing well uh, you know people have their own way of living and uh, you got to respect that so uh, i saw it on facebook um on this show called actually subscribe to them and you guys should subscribe to this uh show it's called Project Nightfall, something like that. And this guy wanted to be so much like an alien that he actually did so much surgeries just to look like an alien. That is incredible. The face, everything, the arms. I mean, he, this guy, I got to admit, he, he was very creative. And I think this all goes back like when he was younger because it actually explains... 
on Project Nightfall explains that when he was a kid, he loved aliens and he loved, you know, fantasy and he always wondered pretty much like a lot of people actually do that. They always wonder if there's something out there that you just never know what's out there, you know, so... Um, many of this stuff that you hear on the, on the news it might be fake, you know, so you just gotta, you know, judge it, you know, hear it, and then judge it for yourself if aliens really do exist, UFOs and all that stuff, so this is another werewolf right here, you can tell it's sort of like a hunch pose right here, it's pretty cool, I like this, and it actually works out, again, it's all about gesture. This is the finished drawing, which is pretty cool. This is a werewolf again. Werewolf. You can see oval shapes kind of right here. Ovals over here. Actually circles, joints, circles. So like, an, excuse me, sort of like an oval right here. And then you got the top here is sort of like an oval circle. And this is sort of like an oval right here. This is by Bernie Weinstein. You can tell his artwork is completely different from everybody else. Here's a cool drawing of Dr. Jackal. Jack yeah, Dr. Jackal and Hyde. I think that's him. Oh no, wait a minute. This is the Phantom. It says right here, the Phantom of the Opera. Right there, see? And this is the gesture to do the Phantom of the Opera. Now, that is pretty cool. I love this. I love the details on this. So, yeah, that's the F Phantom of the Opera. And this is the Hooded Executioner. Pretty cool. Like the Middle Ages, I guess. Like the medieval times, I think. That's how they used to dress, pretty much like that. Can you imagine living in that time? You got your head chopped off for anything you did? It was crazy. And so those were the medieval times. Here's uh, the Chainsaw Massacre. The Chainsaw, well, he called it... I guess he didn't want to, you know, make it seem like the original Chainsaw, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. So this is more like the Chainsaw Maniac. So the name is changed. And you can tell, the here's the gesture form, the forms of the body right here. And uh, this is the finished drawing. It's pretty cool. I love the way he did the um, chainsaw. Awesome. This is uh, a ghoul, a ghoul, something like that. Ghoul, I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right, ghoul. Boy, I got to go back to New York where everyone spoke English because living here in Miami, listening to a lot of Spanish people speaking, I'm kind of losing my, my int intellectual, even my New York accent don't even exist anymore. That is awesome right there. That is really cool. I like, as you can see, it's all made by gesture right here. And then adding form cylinder shapes. And that is really cool. I love that. That came out pretty cool. Very creative indeed. Again, gestures again. And this is the uh, sort of like a science, uh, a mad scientist, I think. Uh, you can tell, yeah, it's a mad scientist. Yeah, it says it right there, mad scientist. Now, who's the artist on this? Let me read this. It says it right here, but you got to open the book a little bit more. Brian Ball did this. He did this drawing right here. So, if you guys ever get this book, you're going to notice that a lot of artists actually contributed to all this stuff here. And especially the technique. So, when they're saying... Like, for example, Brian Ball is like he did the whole process, the technique and the whole finished process. It's sort of like a uh, Frank, 
Frankenstein monster, but it's green though. Look at that. That's pretty cool. <coughs> this one is the Bride of Frankenstein. Doesn't look too much because I remember the old classic movie of the Bride of Frankenstein. So it doesn't look that much like it, like her, you know, sort of like a cartoony kind of way of, here's the actual finished drawing. That's pretty cool. Very cartoony. And this one is the Hunchback from Notre Dame. This is, okay, here it is, Mr. Hyde, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. Well, Dr. Jekyll was the doctor, but Mr. Hyde was when he transformed himself into an evil monster. So, yeah, they did a movie about this, but I just um, can't remember what year it was made. But, yeah, this was sort of like a legend and also um, a movie. Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde. That's also done by Brian Ball. <clears throat> I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. Let me see. Brian is easy, but Ball, B-A-U-G-H. You know, some of these artists, uh, many of them have like pff, different, you know, strange names. Okay, like scare. Okay, this one is the uh, Scary Scarecrow. It starts out with the gesture, and then the forms, and then the finished drawing is right here. Pretty cool. This one, I'm not too sure what this is. Let me read. The Creeping Brain. Imagine that. A creeping brain with big eyes coming out of the top of the brain, and you got all these fang teeth here. and Looks kind of like very alien, kind of. Very alien. Let me see what else we got here. The Fly. Uh, I don't know if you guys saw the movie The Fly, but that was excellent, that movie. This one is made by, let me see. Oh, Steve Miller. Yeah, Steve Miller does stuff like this. The technique, the method, Steve Miller. Which I promise I will show you a couple of books by Steve Miller, which I have that I collected years ago. You can see that this is like two process here. Now, remember, like I mentioned before, that some artists actually give you an option. You can use this or you can use that. And I've shown you pretty much how to do this technique, even though this is a little bit different. But it's or, sort of like, um, let me give you a quick demonstration here. Let me get some paper. And maybe I can probably draw, oh yeah, I could, yeah, 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 I could draw over this. So let me show you what this guy did. So usually um, it's all about shapes, you know, the shapes. And then, then he did a circle for the pelvic area. Then he did the underwear technique pretty much what i've shown you guys this technique is called the underwear technique oh my hand hurts okay that's the underwear technique now you could actually you know do lines if you want or you could just simply do the leg you know just be careful you gotta figure out the length of the leg the width of the leg and the bottom part of the leg so you could do, you know, lines. And I don't know if you guys remember that I've shown you guys that when you're doing gestures, you can do the line and then do the form like that. And then do the joint and do the line and then do the form. It's like you're working two ways at the same time. Here, he's got these big feet here. You see this other foot. Well, this foot is like, you can tell the foot is going more back. See? So. Now, I don't know if you can see this uh, clear in pencil, but I will 
do this in ink so you guys could you know practice this uh, I think this arm is yeah this arm is really big yeah so it's like a very big bulky mutant here that he did and then he did the head right here see that's sort of like a, a skeleton you can tell that the character is like a skeleton see and then this whole body is like really big so the actual drawing to this um <clears throat> is actually this one right here see so in other words uh, when he did this um, i'm going to do this in ink so you guys won't get lost um he did the shape first a circle for the uh, pelvic oh i messed up right there and then an underwear shape with the middle surface line right here the center line and the socket, which is sort of like an underwear shape. And then um, the arms. And then going to the legs again, like I showed you guys before, you start out with a line gesture and then do the shape, see? You're working slow, developing the whole figure. See, like that. And then right here, like that. And then you do the leg, the shape again. Then you do this line again. And then you do the shape. And this big circle here that I did actually will help you form the whole foot. Because if you look at this, he's got a big foot here, see? So hopefully you guys understand what I actually did there. So you guys get an idea, practice that. This is called the, uh, it came from outer space. I know they made a movie. It was called the slime or something like that. And it was, uh, some type of green slime that came from another planet. That was actually, it was very cheesy. That movie. And when I say cheesy, sort of like a low budget movie, you know? So, um, yeah, it is what it is. Sometimes there's a lot of movies that are sort of like low budgets. Here's a, it's sort of like an alien creature. Notice that he did the gesture. And what he when he did this, um, it's very simple. I don't see if I could do this in ink. Better see that way. I don't have to waste so much time to pencil and ink at the same time. You get the other pen here. So what he did was... Um, you did the, the shape of the body, right, right there. The waist. Then he did some sort of like pelvic shape. Pelvic shape right there. And then he did the underwear. Something like that with the center line. And then he, when he did the legs, of course, he did the lines first, and then he did the joints, and the lines first, then the joints right there. So pretty much what you see there, that's what he did here. So I'm going to do it separate here. The problem is I just wanted to capture that whole pose, so I'm going to have to show you a little bit different here and then the head shape right there i don't know what that is oh yeah the brain which i'm going to show you the finished drawing that he did okay so that's how you do this so from this to this this is the finished drawing so you can see those two circles that i did it's the form of this big brain that he has on top of his head. Yeah, this is very creative stuff here. Here we have another alien. So this is called the alien attacker. 
And again, so everything is basically done by gestures right there. Let me put this away. That's another gesture. Well, this is actually the, um, the finished process to this. This is sort of, this is called from the planet of demons. Never heard of that planet. Just playing around, you guys. But yeah, these are very creative characters that these artists have done. And that's what's fun about the comic book world. That you can create a character, anything you want, man. You can create them very evil, monster-like, or the good guy, villain, whatever. You know, it's up to you guys. So let's go a little faster because um, I want to show you the other book. And then after that, I'm going to crash because I'm tired. I need to get some sleep. And um, I will do a tutorial on my day off. Tomorrow is my day off, so I will do a tutorial. I'll sleep first and then, then I'll do a tutorial. And there's some things that I've learned and I've been practicing from YouTube and from Google that I want to share with you guys. Some really cool stuff. And here we have the gesture form right there. Um, also, I want to say to you guys, uh, maybe some of my videos, um, are not that perfect, but you know, I would be, I would feel better if, you know, if you guys would just leave me some comments because it would just give me more, I don't know, more positivity to do more videos and stuff. And I really appreciate your likes and your comments, but I want to see more of it. Um, that's the same thing with my art group on Facebook. I'm not seeing too many um, likes. And I actually created that group so people could actually learn. Uh, and, and it's not just only my artwork or my own techniques. I share a lot of stuff from different artists. In fact, I just downloaded from YouTube uh, maybe three or four or five videos that I got to um, load. I just haven't had time to load it on Facebook yet, but I will. But um, uh, I feel in a way that I created that group and uh, I don't know, sometimes I feel like I'm wasting time because, you know, in the group, I noticed there are people, they're actually, um, they want to post, you know, adult sites, you know, spam at the same time, uh, stupid things that has nothing to do with the group. And uh, like I said, the group, my group on Facebook, it all has to do with comics, drawing people and figures and all that. Because in order to draw comics or anything like, you know, superheroes, you need to learn how to draw the anatomy. And, you know, you need to know how to draw the faces and the heads. And you need to know how to draw ears, eyes and noses. So that's what the, you know, the group is all about. And for you newbies meaning new guys, new subscribers. Um, you can look it up on Facebook. Um, it's called uh, How to Draw Figures and Comics, and you're going to see the, um, the cover. I have like three Supermans, uh, sort of like three methods. It's not hard to find. And all you got to do is look up my name, and then when, once you look up my name, and just Google on Facebook, Google, just say Mark Castillo, whatever, uh, Guzman or just Mark Castillo because that's actually my actual name from Facebook. So all you have to do is look for my group and uh, I am the admin and you guys are welcome anytime. And uh, like I said, I post a lot of cool stuff in that group, you know, and I do this and I don't even make money doing this. You know, I do it out of the heart, you know, because I love to, you know, when I was a kid, I had nobody to teach me. So, and I'm doing this uh, part of, you know, that comes part of me that I, you know, I want to do this for everybody that doesn't know how to draw comics or faces and stuff. And what I know is that's what I want to show you guys so you guys can learn.
All right, so let's skip a couple of pages here. It's all about monsters and creatures and dinosaurs. This is sort of like a sea monster. All right, so let's go on with the next book, which I'm going to show you. This one is called, well, before anything, remember, if you guys are interested in this book, it's called Scared, How to Draw Fantastic Horror Comic Characters by Steve Miller and Brian Ball. Okay, so I'm pretty sure you can find it, but that's where I found it on eBay. So I'm pretty sure you can find it on eBay or Amazon. Amazon has got a lot of um, websites of people selling books and stuff. So some of them are used, but some of them are in good conditions. All right, this one is called Astonish The Astonishing Fantasy Worlds, but the, the Ultimate Guide to Drawing Adventure Fantasy Art. And it's also um, by Christopher Hart. Um, and remember, Christopher Hart is just the author of the book, but there's like maybe three or four or five artists that contributed to this book. So let's go on with this book. And what I like about this book, pretty much, since I love the stories of barbarians and Vikings and Romans and all that stuff, I love all that stuff. So these are cool drawings, how to draw Vikings and creatures at the same time. So this, this is me because, you know, like I said, sometimes I drew on my books, you know, but this is the actual drawing from the book. So pay no mind to this, the rest of this stuff here. This is just stuff that I've been practicing. So, and you're going to see it a lot in this book. And this book is pretty old, you know. And my first books that I got way, way back, yeah, I used to, you know, do the techniques and practice on the side. But I don't know. I, I don't do that anymore. So. so this is how to draw some type of, this is called a female warrior. And it's pretty much like a Loomis method, kind of. This is the profile right there. Here we have the proportions for the warrior bodies. Proportions and basic warrior hero figure drawing right here, the man and the woman. And pretty much like I showed you guys that, you know, the shape of a woman is different, you see? Like sort of like a bean shape here. And the waist uh, is smaller. And the torso is smaller than a man's body, you see? The difference. You can tell all that right here also gives you an idea. <clears throat> Let me put some, uh, because my nose is like, hold on a second. I'll be back. Put some Vicks on my nose so I can breathe a little better. And I'm telling you, it's the AC. When you're, I mean, everywhere you go here in Miami, the air conditioning is like freezing cold. And I understand it's like really hot out there. Trust me, uh, it's not easy. This weather here in Miami is just crazy, crazy hot. But sometimes when you when when you're on the AC, with too much AC is not really good for you. So. So let's go on with this book here. You could tell there's more techniques, you know, like technique step by step process over here. It's pretty cool. It's all made basically cylinder shapes. Pretty cool stuff. That's me, I drew on the book. I might go back and erase some of this stuff, but if I erase this, it might ruin the book. So I don't know, I'm gonna give it a shot. Or maybe I might order this book again because it's pretty old. And uh, hopefully I could find it again. Let's see, let's see what happens. This 
This is a really cool pose right there. Look at that. <clears throat> very, very creative. You can see the chains, the perspective. I love this. The perspective on this is phenomenal. And the character actually leaning forward. That is so cool. This is a great pose right here. This is the first process right here. And this is the uh, the shapes, the muscles. And this is the finished drawing right here. But you can tell this is sort of like cylinders. Let me give you an idea how he did this. <clears throat> so, um, So let's um let's start with this one right here. So what he did was something like this. <laughs> and um the body parts like that. And then the gesture lines coming out. <laughs> like that. Leg. Then the head right there. Let's do another pose. I mean, let's put the arm this side right here. Then he did cylinder shapes. Now, when I do the d cylinder shapes, you know, the form, I always actually um, draw it sort of like a cone shape, sort of like tapered. Instead of doing a cylinder like this, you know, some people do cylinders with their, you know, their bodies. Or the legs, they do it like this. Now that's not the way to do it. You gotta give it form, like this, you know. Or you can start the form of the leg like that first, and then do the cylinder shapes, like that. See. So always be careful when you're doing cylinders on the legs or arms. You want to give it shape. You know what I mean? Like tapered a little bit. Like the form, do the outline first, and then. Just shape it as a cylinder afterwards. That's it. See? Like over here, I'm going to do the shape of the leg. And then I'll do, you know, like you see over here, the cylinder. Like that. See? <clears throat> and then over here, since I did the shape of the leg, right here, then I do the cylinder. See? Like that. So let me, let's go a little faster because um, I don't think I have too much um, storage on my phone. So let's go faster. Plus, I have those five videos I downloaded, so it might mess up my phone. Unfortunately, I got to get myself a Galaxy phone. Something way better than this crappy phone that I have. So I'm going to show you this book, and if I could explain pretty much some techniques, I will. I'll try. Uh, the same thing, you know, the uh, gesture, the underwear technique. <clears throat> but that's pretty cool. That's awesome right there. This is the finished drawing. Very Viking. I love stuff like this. Really cool stuff. Viking barbarians. Cursed Sumer mans or something. Sumer humans. Oh, oh cursed semi-humans. That's what it's called. Uh, these are names probably made up. Uh, sword fights. That's pretty cool. Using different weapons. That is awesome. I love the way that drawing was made. I haven't seen this book in, oh my God, ages. The reason why I'm seeing it now, because I'm sharing, you know, all these books with you guys. But believe it or not, I hardly look at these books sometimes. Because, you know, my life is just work, 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 work. But I don't even have time to not even work with my playlist, with my music or either, you know, look at my books, look all, you know, review my old books, especially the old books that I've gotten. 
So everything is just work, work, and then sleep, sleep, and then, you know, it's just, I don't any, I barely have any time for myself. Or the things that I want to do, the things that I really love. And when I was married, because I was married twice, oh my God, forget it, it was just, I felt like I was in bowling chains getting married, because I was married with the, you know, wrong women to basically every day a lot of arguments it's just crazy that is pretty cool right there this is awesome awesome work very you can see there's a lot of drama happening here very cool stuff. And you can see that the artist that did this knew what he was doing. Like, you see the foreground here. Uh, there's a sense of perspective here. Like, for example, you have a foreground drawing here coming at him. You have the middle ground over here and the background, you see? You got to make your drawing pretty interesting. And if I were you, before you guys do like a comic book or a cover, or whatever, just practice on a separate piece of paper. But always remember, give it a good composition on your drawings. And that's something that I need to improve in. I need to work with a lot of uh, composition and perspective and all that stuff. That is pretty cool. I like this. This is the finished drawing right there. This one is called the Medieval World. So yeah, this is, yeah, it's pretty much like gesture drawing. You can see sort of like a mannequin style. This is the finished drawing right there. Here we have more. This is another one, this is pretty cool. I like this, very creative stuff. The castle. Really cool stuff. <clears throat> Plus another gesture here. The form of the body. The profile is pretty cool. How to draw horses. You can see it's basic shapes, shapes, forms and shapes to finish the whole finished drawing here. Here's the head of the horse. Pretty cool stuff. This is a medieval armor dude, dry, you know, what am I saying? Driving, riding a horse. Oh my God, do I need help. <laughs> driving a horse, <laughs> riding a horse, my god, I think I'm going to crash after this, I need to get some rest, okay, so here's, this is really cool, I, I like the way he did this, really cool stuff, very medieval horses, believe it or not, that's how they used to dress their horses, the medieval times, in Spain and in France, uh, many parts of Europe actually did stuff like this, on their horses. That's a cool technique, how to do a horse. I'm going to try that out one day. Really cool stuff here. That's another technique in doing a horse. Pleasant life, wood and peasant closing. And here we have the powerful sorcerer. Pretty cool. I like this. The dragons. You can see I did this because I started trying to figure out how this was done. 
but the real process to this is something like this which I'm going to show you and a lot of comic book artists actually work like this you know they do the, the stick figure first something like that <coughs> This cough is incredible. All right, so then we have the oval shape for the top part of the body. And then he does another oval, a circle, an oval, you know, for the pelvic area. Arms, head. So, yeah, that's what you see here is, is this right here. And then... All you gotta do is just do the shapes, see? You do the shapes. You can work from the top, or if you want, you just work from the bottom. Like that, see? There's an artist called Emberlim, which I forgot, I think it's, his name is um, Brian Emberlim, I'm not really sure. And he did an illustration for a whole bunch of people in, you know, Life Studio, uh, drawing comics. And he did a great, great um, uh, gesture, something like this, but um, doing Spider-Man. That was pretty cool. But I forgot his real name, but I actually um, loaded a vi the video and it's on my Facebook group if you guys ever join the group. You will see his video, uh, Emberlim. I think his name is Emberl Emberlim. So yeah, pretty much what you see here is pretty much like that. Uh, you do the same technique for a woman also, but except remember when you're doing a woman, if you were to do this pose right here, when you're doing the woman, it's basically, you know, the, the bottom part, you have to make it a little bit bigger, of course, because the, the hip area of the woman is more bigger, so you always got to keep that in mind. And then, you know, the torso is smaller, and then, of course, you her arms, right? She's holding the sword. I don't know if it's, I'm going to get that right. Let me see. Yeah, I got it a little bit. Um, in the head right there so all you got you know you just visualize the shape of the hip area the waist you know and then you start doing the rest that's it you know you can add a cylinder also because this is foreshortened right here so this leg comes in further in so yeah you can do this almost the same thing you know, or you can just do the whole big, big circle and then just do the shape of her hips like that. And just remember the, the V shape for the crotch area. So, of course, you don't see it here because she's got clothes. And this is a real cool. I love this because uh, this is all the weaponry, you know, the swords, knives, axes, you know. And I already showed you on my other videos how to do weapons just by drawing it from the center line to the outside. Here we have medieval weapons, big weapons to attack any castle, I think. So it's pretty cool, I like this. This is my favorite, and the reason why it's my favorite because it kind of reminds me sort of like a, a Star Wars uh, fifth character. So that is pretty cool. Look at that. I haven't seen this drawing in a long time. And you can see, look at the details on this. Phenomenal. Fantastic detailing on this. From all the way from the top, the chest area has got a lot of great details. And of course, this is the uh, gesture uh, figure. How to construct this whole thing here. And, and this guy is called the Hooded Assassin. Yep, that's the name of this character. So yeah, these are strange names that these artists have come out with. Classic sword poses. That's pretty cool. Defending. 
striking from above. Clashing swords, that's pretty cool. Attack and retreat, awesome. Slashing, when you're slashing the character. You can see he's slashing his body right there. Timeless medieval fantasy elements. Yeah, I love stuff like this. This is pretty cool stuff. Death and the dragon. That is a fantastic drawing of a castle. Look at that. And you can see there's a sense of perspective here. It's sort of like a big triangle shape here, you see? You can see it very clearly just by looking at the shapes of the buildings, at the, the way the direction of the buildings are facing is perspective, you see? It's pretty cool. I like that. And this actually the um, actual grid line to do all this. He started over here. There's a lot of perspective here, see? Grid lines and perspective at the same time. Pretty cool stuff. And again, some of these drawings are probably made in Photoshop. They draw the character, you know, either in pencil and inking. And then after that, they, you know, do a lot of Photoshop to correct some errors or paintings or, you know, coloring the character, which is pretty cool. Um, This kind of reminds me of this movie that I have. It's called Heavy Metal. And of course, the movie is very, very bizarre, off the wall, something that came from the 80s, I think, or probably late 70s, I'm not really sure. But uh, Heavy Metal was one of the weirdest, weirdest movie I've ever seen. But I bought it like way back um, because I love the animation. It's fantastic. And I love the end of the movie, the woman, the woman with the sword. Oh man, that is awesome. So yeah, that movie is fantastic. It's called Heavy Metal. So if you guys never heard of it, look it up. It's called, just look up Google, Google, Google it. Movie called Heavy Metal, an animation called Heavy Metal. And when they made that movie, they act, that's when they made the original um, animation of Lord of the Rings. Now, that's another one that's really good. Uh, the animation in that movie of Lord of the Rings was phenomenal. It's just incredible. It's just very, very creative stuff. The troll character. And this is the uh, finished drawing. That's pretty cool. I, love, I just love the way he did all the details on this big stump thing. There's a lot of details here. This is sort of like the serpent lady, half human and half snake. Pretty cool. I don't, I don't know if you guys remember the movie uh, Clash of the Titans. Oh man, you gotta see that movie. Um, when Medusa, I don't know if you guys are familiar with Medusa, she's the lady with the uh, snakes on her head. And then her half of her body was made like sort of like a snake. That movie was incredible. You can see a sense of gesture here. See, here's the um, sort of like an oval for the top of the waist area right here. And then you see the like sort of like the, the crotch area, but like a block shape. I don't know why he did did it like that, but I guess it works. I'm not really sure. So he did pretty much like, like there are artists that actually work that way. So let's just do this real quick. Like that. And then you do some sort of hint of the pelvic there. And then the legs coming from the waistline right there, see? So that's what he did here. And the head. So, um, <clears throat> after that, you know, you start shaping the contour, the outline of the body, you know. You know, you could scribble it if you want, you know, like scribble in 
until you see that the shape is taking form by scribbling. Scribbling actually helps out. A lot of people don't like to use scribbling, you know, but sometimes I'll, I'll use it, you know, scribbling. You're scribbling the whole form of the body. So it actually works out. Um, so let's go on with the red, the other pages. This is more like uh, fairy characters. Pretty cool stuff. How to draw the ears. More like dwar dwarf ears, I think. Yeah, these are like dwarf ears. And you can see this sort of has a sort of kind of like a magna manga style on the face a little bit, kind of. And we have the face right there again. The male fairy face. Fairy body proportions. The female three quarter view. The male front, the male side. Pretty cool stuff. The fabulous fairy wings. Seasonal fairies. Some people like to draw. Oh, excuse me. Oh my God, I definitely got to sleep after this. Okay. Um, like I was saying, some people like to draw, you know, dragons, uh, medieval fairies or, you know, barbarians, Vikings and stuff like that. You know, it's, it, it depends on the mood that you, you know, you guys want to draw, whatever you guys want to draw. And like I said, you know, when you learn a method, you can create anything, man, any, any, any character you want. That's pretty cool. The pose. This is more like uh, details, you see, it says it right there, fairy with details. That's awesome. It's got a lot of details. More like a Frank Buzz, uh, Frazetta or I would say John Buscema. The way John Buscema would draw it. Very cool. Here we go back with perspective. You see a lot of grid lines and perspective and stuff. And I mentioned before in my other videos that when you're doing uh, composition, you know, you could uh, use uh, this technique, especially when you're doing comic books or comic strips. Um, it's, it's using the grid line, you know. And then you visualize where those people are going to be at. You can draw a person over here. And then a, the other person more on the front view, the foreground a little bigger. You know, it gives it a good composition. You know, by using grid lines like that, flat, or using grid lines perspective too, see? You can tell there's uh, a lot of perspective here. That's pretty cool right there. More techniques, dead pirates. Okay, now we're going with pirates now. Oh, excuse me. Um, classic vampire. That's pretty cool. I like that. Lady Vampire. So yeah, this book is pretty cool. It's got almost all types of creatures. Oh, Lady Medusa right there. She is with the snakes. Except in the movie, it shows with a sort of like the body was the body had a form like a some type of prehistoric snake or something with spines coming out of it. I'm not really sure. But I haven't seen that movie in a long time. I might probably uh, order it in the future. Because it's one of my favorite movies. Um, Clash of the Titans. 
And if you guys are into fantasy, you'll definitely love the movie. That's pretty cool. <clears throat> and drink something. The Green Ripper, the Gargoyle, the transformation from man to werewolf. Pretty cool stuff. I gotta admit the details are phenomenal. I love the details on this, it's fantastic. <clears throat> Here's um, the process, doing the gesture. You can see it's sort of like a V shape for the pelvic area. And the way he did this, which is pretty small, you won't be able to see it because it's kind of small, see? But I'm gonna show you how he did that. Use another pencil. He did something like that. Then he did a, sort of like a V shape, triangle shape and then the joints and then he did cone shapes you see like cone shapes then he did another cone shape here like that so the head always last cone shapes for the arms you know Pretty much like I showed you guys, that everything is basic um, cylinder shapes, cone shapes, and outlines of the body. There's so many ways you can do drawing people and faces and figures just by using shapes and forms and uh, cylinders and outlines. That's pretty cool. It's called the two-headed dog. Pretty cool. And like I said, I haven't seen this book in ages. All right, that's it, guys. Um, I'm not going to read too much about the author because I don't have time. And plus, I got to get some rest. So hopefully, you guys look out for this book. It's a very good book. So, um, you know, look, look. I think on Amazon My Habit and on eBay. So, you know, try those, those websites. All right, guys. Thank you very much for watching my video and good luck with your artwork.